Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. From all that dwell below the skies, let the Creator's praise arise. Let the Redeemer's name be sung through every land by everyone. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. And with your spirit. I'd like to um, uh, welcome uh, everyone uh, who's watching this uh, Mass online. Um, as, uh, today is uh, the, fe- the, the, memor- you know, the, the Feast of Our Lady of Cumbermere. I, I don't know if you're familiar with that. Uh, uh, there's a, there's a, a religious uh, community called Madonna House in Cumbermere, uh, and they celebrate uh, today is their feast day. And they're, and they're like our cousins, you know, the companions of the cross, they're like our cousins, the, the Madonna House. So uh, I wish them all the, uh, the best, you know, on this uh, great feast day. I remember five years ago, uh, I was able to celebrate my second Mass. You know, I did my first Mass here at St. Mary's five years ago on June 7. And then on June 8th, I was able to celebrate my second Mass to fulfill my promise to uh, Our Lady of Cumbermere because we have a spiritual formation house there uh, uh, with the Companions of the Cross there at Cumbermere uh, to thank her that uh, I, will, I, will, uh, I will thank her if I become a priest. So I was able to celebrate my second Mass uh, uh, there. So today also, as you notice, uh, um, it's just me, Deacon Marcus, and Cesar. So it's going to be an all-boys choir. <laughs> today, and uh, so it's going to be more uh, silence, uh, so it's like going to be like a monastic mass. So, so just enter into that silence uh, with uh, prayer and meditation. So brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have gravely sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison, Christe eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas, and since without your you mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace that in following your commands, we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. Elijah the Tishbit said to King Ahab, As the Lord, the God of Israel, lives before whom I stand, there shall be neither dew nor rain these years except by my word. The word of the Lord came to him, saying, Go from here and turn eastward and hide yourself by the Wadi Sherith, which is east of the Jordan. You shall drink from the wadi, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he went, and he did according to the word of the Lord. He went and lived by the wadi Sherith, 
which is east of the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the wadi. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is, our help is from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will, I, will my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Our help is from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will never slumber nor sleep. Our help is from the Lord who made heaven and earth. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. Our help is from the Lord who made heaven and earth. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and for more. Our help is from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Rejoice and be glad, your reward will be great in heaven. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. So I want to take what little time I have right now to speak about an issue which really deserves a far greater amount of time. And while I don't feel qualified to address it, and I know my words may and, and will fall short, I feel like this is what the Lord has asked me to do, and I want to be faithful to that prompting. I want to talk about racism and the recent police brutality. Today marks two weeks since George Floyd was killed by a police officer in Minnesota. Since then, throughout the United States, Canada, and the world, there have been protests and demonstrations almost daily demanding change and rightfully so. Demonstrations which are seeking to end police brutality and to end racism, which is still very much alive today. These past two weeks have been filled with mourning, discouragement, anger, politics, and confusion. There's been this overwhelming demand for justice as more and more people are no longer silent in seeing the inhumane treatment of another human being. The violent and racist behavior which has gone on for far too long in so many countries. And in these past two weeks, we've seen different responses to what has happened. There have been those who have taken advantage of the situation, 
those individuals who have turned to looting, to rioting, fervoring the violence and only making the situation worse and the divides greater. Then on the other hand, there have been those who have sought to, to be peacemakers in the world, which is still riddled with hatred. Peacemakers both among protesters and among officers and officials who are seeking peace and justice. They genuinely want to learn from the sins of the past while yearning for healing and unity for the future. And as more and more videos and reports arise from various cities of police violence and apparent racism underlying that violence, there's a sobering reality of, of how much reform is still needed. Racism and brutality are realities that many people have to deal with, sometimes on a daily basis. Since the COVID-19 pandemic began, there's been a noticeable increase in racism. We need to talk about this. For some of you watching, you have experienced racism firsthand, perhaps indirectly, but I can imagine for some of you, you've experienced this directly. I was asking Father Ken about his experience and how he shared here in Canada, he himself has experienced racism. During my seminary formation, I, I lived in Detroit, Michigan, and a city which in 1967, you may remember that there was a major riot that happened which centered on the issue of racism. And today there still remains racism and injustice. Has there been progress? Definitely. But are, have we arrived? Not at all. The death of George Floyd showcases this. How many people died before George and their death went without notice? How many people suffered and because it wasn't filmed, there was no change? No ability for people to speak out and to see the injustice for what it is. And so now we're, we're at this point where, where tensions remain high. We, we remain in this pandemic and people are struggling and they demand, they want change. So what are we to do? How are we going to overcome and change something that, that seems so much bigger, so much greater than ourselves? Well, racism, it, it didn't occur overnight. Racism has been a reality long before Canada existed, long before the United States existed. It goes way back in time throughout civilizations because sin goes back in time. Sin goes deep into our past and, and deep within ourselves. Sin distorts the truth. Sin leads us to turn against God and to turn against one another. And no sin, no sin is private. Every sin affects everyone else. It, it taints the world. And we're seeing that in full effect today. So just as sin goes deep, our, our solution to it has to be deep. Far too often politics lead to, to surface level changes. Changes while being in the right direction and often with good intentions, they fall short of what really needs to change. Does this mean we abandon politics and seeking justice through law and, and reforms of government, institutions? Not at all. We should use our ability to vote. We should use our ability to have peaceful protests and demonstrations. These can promote change. But if that's all that we do, if we leave it at that, we will always be left disappointed because it doesn't go deep enough. It doesn't deal with the reality of sin. And so I offer five suggestions of how we can try to achieve a deeper change. In offering these suggestions, once again, I recognize there are far more qualified people than I to speak about this. And I don't attempt for a moment to virtue signal as if I have it all figured out because I, I don't. I really don't. But I simply offer what little I have and I ask for the Lord to multiply it because I, I can't be silent on this issue. So first of all, we need to recognize that the only way we can overcome sin, the only way we can overcome guilt that comes with sin is through Jesus Christ and what he did for us upon the cross. Jesus Christ died for George Floyd. He died for Jarek Chauvin. He died for you. He died for me. It is the blood of Christ that will ultimately wash away the sin of racism, but only if we turn to him. Second, and, and related to the first point, change while rooted in the power of Christ begins with me. It begins with you. We cannot expect the world to change if we ourselves are not willing to change. The world changes through people, people like you, people like me, and so we need to examine our life 
We need to invite the Holy Spirit to help us to see whether there's any areas in my life, any behaviors, any tendencies, any actions or, or lack of action that has contributed to, to racism. We can be blind to our behavior. That's why we need the Holy Spirit to, to help us see. And if we realize that we failed, we need to repent. We need to turn to the Lord and ask for his forgiveness. Then if we're able to, we need to make amends to those whom we've harmed and to change our behavior so that the cycle of hatred doesn't continue. Third, we need to listen. Just as we need to listen to the Holy Spirit, we need to listen to each other. Your experience is different from my experience, and there's much we can learn from each other. Right now, there's so many people voicing stories of pain, voicing stories of anger. People want to be heard, and people need to be heard. Are we listening? And I'm not talking about simply listening to the news, the latest news cycle, but are we listening to those closest to us? Those around us, whether in our family, our work, our school, our neighborhood. Are we also willing to listen to those who are furthest from us? Those from other parts of town that maybe we don't go to or people who I don't normally socialize with? How often do I stop and listen to what's really going on? Without listening, we cannot understand. And without understanding, we cannot change. Fourth. We need to be united as Christians in fighting to end racism and any form of brutality against another human being, whether from police or otherwise. As Christians, we say we are pro-life. We're adamant in defending life from conception to natural end. Well, George Floyd's life was robbed from him. It was robbed from his family, as with so many before him. Will we unite together in defending the dignity of his life? Every person, regardless of the color of their skin, where they're from, or what language they speak, they are created in the image and likeness of God. Every person has an inherent dignity which cannot be earned, nor can it be taken away. Our society may try, and, and it has, but we cannot let it continue any longer. So as Christians, we cannot be absent from this conversation. We need to be at the center Throughout this history, since the church was founded by Jesus Christ, Christians have stood apart by their radical love, by their radical service to their fellow man. Today, the world is skeptical of that love because we've failed to witness to it. Let us unite once more to overcome the hatred that's in this world. Fifth, we need to pray. Prayer changes things. Prayer is not simply sending out warm wishes or positive energy, whatever that means. Prayer is entering into a dialogue with the living God. It's recognizing who God is and who we are and how we stand in need. God is not absent from this moment. He's not off in the clouds, unaware or uninterested. He wants us to turn to him. He wants us to seek his power, to seek his wisdom. We do so by praying and asking for the grace we need at this time. Praying for those whose hearts have become hardened, and for those who are steeped in sin and patterns of behavior which have contributed to the brutality and racism. We need prayer to break the chains, the chains of racism. So let us intercede together. If we begin with these five things, and they're just a beginning, a foundation, I believe we'll be headed in the right direction. And there'll be a lot of work to do, and it won't happen overnight, it will take time. But there's a momentum right now, a grace that's available right now that the Lord can use to bring good out of this horrible situation. A momentum where the Holy Spirit can use you, he can use me in a powerful way as an instrument of peace. Our response to the recent injustice cannot remain on the surface level. Sin is not on the surface. As I said, sin goes deep and we need a deep conversion within society and that begins with me. So let us take time to pray and, and take time to recognize that we're not alone in this. Jesus is with us in this time of pain. As we, he said in the gospel today, he says to us now, blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. And blessed are the peacemakers, 
for they will be called children of God. Happiness is the most elusive of all human pursuits. We pray now to God the Father for that inner peace which comes from becoming totally dependent on Him. That the leaders of the church may have the courage and strength to proclaim the good news, which is a sign of contradiction to the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are facing persecution because of their witness to the gospel may experience the comforting presence of Christ in the midst of their happiness. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may take the Beatitudes to heart and become blessed and happy in establishing God's kingdom on earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick and those who mourn the loss of their loved ones may be strengthened and healed of their sorrow and pain. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the dead may experience the joy and peace of the heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for uh, the eternal repose of the soul of George Floyd and comfort and consolation for his family. We also pray for the, for the police, the perpetrators. Uh, we, all, yeah, we pray for an end of racial discrimination uh, throughout the whole world, uh, for end of police brutality, and uh, we pray for peace and justice. Uh, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the special intentions of this Mass, for for the repose of the soul of Miss Lee, offered by Tanya Padeliaro. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Eternal Father, we know that you, are, you care deeply for our happiness. Strengthen us and keep us close to you, who is the source of our peace and joy. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, grant, we pray, that sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we'll be doing uh, the Eucharistic prayers for reconciliation. Okay. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just that we should always give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you do not cease to spur us on 
to possess a more abundant life. And being rich in mercy, you constantly offer pardon and call on sinners to trust in your forgiveness alone. Never did you turn away from us, and through time and again, and we have broken your covenant. You have bound the human family to yourself through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Redeemer, with a new bond of love so tight that it can never be undone. Even now, you set before your people a time of grace and reconciliation. And as they turn back to you in spirit, you grant them hope in Christ Jesus and a desire to be of service to all, while they entrust themselves more fully to the Holy Spirit. And so filled with wonder, we extol the power of your love and proclaiming our joy of the salvation that comes from you. We join in the heavenly hymn of countless hosts, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Marcel and Terence, our bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we are married to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, 
that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Agnus Dei, qui solis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui solis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui solis peccata mundi, Dona nobis pace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not, not worthy, worthy that you should that you enter under my, my roof, roof, but only say, say the, the word, word, and my soul shall be healed. act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you're already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. to my heart come into my heart come into my heart Lord come into my heart cleanse me of my sin Cleanse me of my sin. Cleanse me of my sin, Lord. Cleanse me of my sin. Let us pray. As this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you for a wonderful homily there, Deacon Marcus. Uh, it's always good to preach on uh, the current issues, right? And, and how, um, how we could really involve Jesus in, 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 in our current uh, uh, situations 
in, in life right now. So, yeah. So the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And to thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost.